Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at how we can utilize S Foundation's integrated Python scripting window to further optimize our foundation design. For this example, I'm actually going to be creating a foundation and my intention with this foundation creation is to create an, unre an unrealistically small foundation. The one that I know is going to fail the design checks I'm going to perform. So I'm going to give it an arbitrary thickness that is meant to be thin uh, and a small uh, width and depth, just as kind of a starting point. And for the pedestal as well, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it small dimensions as well. So it's going to look a little bit strange as we can see here. I'll get rid of this base plate since that's not really necessary. Um, and this is again, just meant to be kind of a starting point for a design. Uh, one to illustrate this type of workflow, not one that we would necessarily think would be a viable solution for uh, our foundation design. So with that set up, let me go here to the uh, reaction loads here, and I'm just going to apply a reaction load to the top for a single load case. At the top of my pedestal, I'm going to have 300 kip uh, compression load on this pedestal. And if I look here at the design input window, I'm going to change it to the ACI 2019 code, uh, and that's what I'm going to be using for this particular code check and design. So I'm going to go ahead now and just run an analysis and a code check. And when we run the analysis and code check, we're getting this message indicating that the model is unstable. Now this could be related to a number of things. As you can see, there's a few different variations. In this particular instance, it's most likely due to the fact that we have a very small area uh, at the bottom of our pad with a fairly high pressure load and it's exceeding the ultimate bearing capacity, uh, which dictates the maximum strength of our soil springs. Not to worry, our intention here was really just to prove that this foundation is uh, inadequately designed. So I'm going to click OK. And what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to expand the field here on the right and access the script editor window. If you don't see this window on your screen, you can go to the window menu and you can open up script editor here. You can open and close it with this command or with this window. And we'll just quickly walk through this because this is a Python script uh, within the S foundation interface. And you can see here that it's got some explanations in the comments about what it's going to be doing. So it's going to, first of all, try to design the paths to soil bearing. Then it's going to design the pedestals. Then it's going to design the paths to punching shear pads to one-way shear and the pads to flexure. And we can see all the different iterations that have been set up. So it has a total of 30 iterations. Uh, we set up the increments for width uh, for our pads and so on, uh, just to give us a way of basically stepping through this design in an efficient manner. And it's going through this process in that sequence because it is the most efficient way to accomplish that task. We can modify this Python script if we'd like to. We can even write our own from scratch. Uh, we're happy to provide this one to you. This one's set up for Imperial units. We have another one for metric units, if you'd like to take a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this script. And let me just move this out of the way. We can see what's happening. Basically, it's iterating through different pad dimensions and eventually pedestal dimensions as well to come up with a solution that passes the code checks. And here we can see the output in the script output window. And we can see what it's done. So it's performing a foundation code check uh, for soil bearing. And you can see the original utilization was very high, 16.2. So we changed the pad width and the pad depth. And we're updating that and basically iterating, into, iterating until we come up with a solution. The final pad width and depth worked out to be 84 inches. Then we went into the code checking of the pedestal. Uh, and we increased the pedestal, I mean pedestal width uh, from what its original setting was. Then we were looking at uh, punching shear. So we went and found a new punching shear, uh, sorry, a, a new pad thickness to meet the punching shear demands, which worked out to be 20 inches in this scenario. And we can see the old and the new thicknesses listed here. And finally, we have one-way shear and flexure. And again, this involves changing to the uh, the thicknesses that are used. So we actually stepped up the thickness from 20 inches to 26 inches for one-way shear. 20 inches would work for punching shear, but not for one-way shear. And finally, we have our flexure where we were adjusting the reinforcement being used in this particular pad. So 
So now if I go and take a look at the define menu, and I look at, for example, the define pad pile cap, we can see here that the dimensions being used are not the same as what I had originally input. Remember what's calculated through the uh, design script that I'm using. Now it's certainly possible, for example, in this scenario where the, where the solution that this design wizard has come up with may not necessarily match your exact intentions uh, as an engineer. And that's fine, it gives you a good starting point to perform additional design uh, changes, but at least now you're not starting from a point of no prior information. We could then take a closer look at the analysis in code check. Uh, if we rerun this, And here, if I just expand the design output window, we can see that we actually have a passing utilization for each and every one of these design checks now, whereas before they weren't even able to analyze, but we were getting uh, very high utilizations, even for the earlier uh, iterations in our design uh, process. Now, if you'd like to learn more about S Foundation, uh, we encourage you to check out the other YouTube videos on our YouTube channel, Altair How To. And also check out the online training course. It's available on demand through the Altair One uh, Learning Resource Center.